Good evening, and welcome to Truth Seekers Read, The Bible Says What? First of all, we want to start off with prayer. So, Lord, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for just giving us your uh, knowledge and wisdom to come forth, Lord, and declare your word. Lord, we just want to pray for each and every person that's listening, Lord, that they may uh, receive illumination of the word that's given tonight. Lord, we just want to thank you for all the things that you have done on our behalf and on the world's behalf. Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, dying on the cross for our sins. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So, this evening we will be uh, addressing the law again. And we're going to address a couple different issues. So, the first thing we, the, the main thing we're going to look at is the, the law as far as uh, sacrifice. Some people are saying that Jesus came and only fulfilled the sacrificial law. So we're going to point out a couple things tonight and show in scripture if it's just sacrificial law that's done away with. So as we start tonight, we want to uh, turn to the book of Acts starting at chapter 13. Uh, now, which, uh, which version are you using? Uh, the King, King James. Oh, you're in the King James. Okay. New King James or old? It ain't the black New one, King. is it? No, no. <laughs> you, know, you know, they got the black King James now. <laughs> so we're going to... Uh, what do you say? King James what? I mean, New that, King James. I, I, love, I messed up all the way. What, 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 what chapter we in? Uh, Acts 13. 13. Okay. And I'm going to start with uh, starting at 36 through 41. And it says this. <clears throat> it says, For David... After he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep, was buried with his fathers, and saw corruption. But he whom God raised up saw no corruption. Therefore, let it be known to you, brethren, that through this man is preached to you the forgiveness of sins. And by him, everyone who believes is justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Beware, therefore, lest what has been spoken in the prophets come upon you. Uh, verse 41. Behold, you despise us, marvel and perish, for I work a work in your days, a work which you will by no means believe, though one were to declare it to you. So as we are, uh, as we're looking at this verse in Acts, we see that faith is preached through Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and without Jesus Christ there is no there's no remission or you can't your sins are removed so as we go over this verse we starting to show that through Jesus Christ only are your sins removed and the law does not remove those sins so that's what we are pointing out and I'll go back to verse 39 and it says by him everyone who believes is justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Mm. So now we see right there, there's a separation. So when we're looking at this, we see that first of all, you got the law and then you have the gospel. But a lot of people are not understanding that there, there are two different principles. The law brought on condemnation and the gospel brings on grace. So we have to see that these two don't go hand in hand. So, verse 38 is preached forgiveness of sin. So, as we look at verse 30, 38, it says, Therefore, let it be known to you, brethren, that through this man is preached to you the forgiveness of sins. So, through Christ comes what? The forgiveness of sins. And when your sins are forgiven, that's how you get justified. Because the law only brings, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the law only brings, uh, I can't think of the word I'm looking for. Condemnation. condemnation. Yeah, condemnation. Which, if you are judged by the law, you get condemned for the things that you did. Mm -hmm. So now, as we go further, I want to give an example. <clears throat> if the law could save you, mm -hmm. then other people wouldn't. Uh, sal it, it would say the law plus salvation. Mm -hmm. So look, let's look at John three. John chapter. John chapter 3 starting at verse 1 okay and it, it says this <clears throat> there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus a ruler of the Jews this man came to Jesus by night and said to him rabbi we know that you are a teacher come from God 
For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So as we look at this, we see that Nicodemus came to Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. Nicodemus was a rabbi, was a ruler amongst the Jews. So he already had the law. Mm -hmm. So then if he comes to Jesus and starts to ask him questions and Jesus tells him, you must be born again, then that's telling him what? That he, uh, that he couldn't be justified by the law. Mm -hmm. So the law was not going to remove his sins, mm -hmm. right? Right. So as we're looking at this, we gonna I'm gonna go back uh, to Acts chapter 13, starting at uh, verse 40, and we're gonna see the warning that he that he gave. So and it says, "Beware, therefore, lest what has been spoken in the prophets come upon you." So now, what is he warning? What is he warning uh, the Jews about? And then we see in verse 41, it says, Behold, you despisers, marvel and perish, for I work a work in your days, a work which you will by no means believe, though one were to, to declare it to you. So now, as we look, hey, Pastor Alvin, hey. as we look, we're going to go over to the, uh, the, the book of, which I have a problem pronouncing, Verse one through five. Habakkuk. 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 Yeah. All right. All right. How y'all want to see this? This is all good. I just, potato, potato. Well, yeah. Listen. Every time I see it, it still just looks strange to me. Okay. It says, "The burden which the prophet Habakkuk saw, O Lord, how long shall I cry and you will not hear? Even cry out to you, violence, and you will not save. Why do you show me iniquity and because and and cause me to see trouble?" For plundering and violence are before me. There is strife and contention arises. Therefore the law is powerless and justice never goes forth. Verse 1, 1 through 5. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. For the wicked surround the righteous. Therefore perverse judgment proceeds. Verse 5. And this is the warning from uh, Acts 13 and 40, 41. It says, Look among the nations and watch. Be utterly astounded, for I will work a work in your days which you would not believe, though it were told to you. So, right here we had a prophet warning them about something that's going to happen, which is salvation through Jesus Christ. Because in the book of uh, Habakkuk, salvation is one of the key words that's used that's dealing with Christ. So, at this time, the Jews had the law, but he said, I'm going to work a work in your days which you will not believe even if one tells you which will be what salvation through Christ so that's what we see here and we see the warning so now as we go forth remember tonight that we're talking about the law versus faith and do they go hand in hand mm -hmm. because some say that salvation or sacrificial law has been done away with but the rest of the law isn't so that's what we address in this okay. evening Right. So I'm going to go over to Galatians chapter 2 11 through 14 And it says this <coughs> Now when Peter had come to Antioch I withstood him to his face Because he was to be blamed For before certain men came from James He would eat with the Gentiles mm. But when they came He withdrew and separated himself Fearing those who were of the circumcision and the rest of the Jews also played the hypocrite with him, so that even Barnabas was carried away with their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter before them all, If you, being a Jew, live in the manner of Gentiles and not as Jews, why do you compel Gentiles to live as Jews who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles? So now, when we look at this, the, the main point that I'm pointing out here is that Paul was still Peter to his face, and they talking about dietary laws. Because why? Peter was there eating with Gentiles who are not who are not what some would call the dispersed Jew, but were eating with Gentiles. And then when the circumcision or when Jews actually came around, he would play the hypocrite and then go and eat with them and say, "Oh, 
I'm not having no more hog moths. I don't know more no more <laughs> spare ribs. You know, this is, this is the problem that they were having. So if some come and tell you that, oh, Jesus only fulfilled the sacrificial law, well then right here we see that uh, from this account in Galatians, this wasn't true, that the dietary laws was already being talked against. And we go to the book of uh, Acts chapter 15, and we can get a full account of that. Right? Can I ask you a question? Sure. So, and, and he also makes a distinguishment in, in this text between the circumcision, he refers to some as the circumcision, mm -hmm. right? Jews. Exactly. And so there is a distinction between Gentiles and Jews, between circumcision and uncircumcision. Amen. Amen. And like, like you pointed out, Pastor, that well, some say that these are dispersed, but if they were dispersed, right, they would already be circumcised. Right. So, yeah. Right. And they, they, they would, he would still refer to them as circumcision and not Gentiles. Exactly. They, even, 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 if they, even if they had gone off and, and were caught up into some other things, they were still they still would have been by nature dis, the circumcision. Circumcision, exactly. And they would have had the law. So exactly. then they, at this point, there would have been no point of, of saying that. Right, exactly. So let's look at this account over in Acts chapter 15, starting at verse 1. And it says this. And certain men came down from Judea and taught the brethren, unless you are circumcised according to the customs of Moses, you cannot be saved. Therefore, when Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and dispute with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain others of them should go to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. So being sent on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, describing the conversion of the Gentiles. And they caused great joy to all the brethren. And when they had come to Jerusalem, they were received by the church and the apostles and the elders. And they reported all things that, had, that God had done with them. But some of the sect of the Pharisees who believed rose up, saying it is necessary to circumcise them and to command them to keep the laws of Moses. Now, as we see through this full passage, we're going to keep going, that they're showing a distinction between those who are circumcised and those who are not. And they're already having a council or a meeting to say, okay, which one is the truth? All right? Let's go on. Verse 6. It says, Now the apostles and elders came together to consider this matter. And when there had been much dispute, Peter rose up and said to them, Men and brethren, you know that a good while ago God chose among us that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So God, who knows the heart, acknowledged them by giving them the Holy Spirit just as he did to us and made no distinction between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why do you test God by putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of, of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved in the, in the same manner as they. So now as we looking at this, we see that they're breaking this thing down. They're saying, first of all, they're going to Gentiles who are not dispersed Jews or Jews that were lost. These are actually converts, people that are coming in. And then they're having a discussion to say, we, they don't have to be circumcised. Mm. So then they went all the way back to Jerusalem to discuss this. And then, what do they say? By faith you shall be saved and not through the law of Moses. Mm. So we see a clear, distinct uh, breakdown of what's going on here in the book of Acts. Letting us know that what faith and and the law don't go hand in hand. There's a difference between the principle of law and the principle of the gospel. Right? Now, we looked at this week and uh, went through. Now, uh, I want to address this thing on dis the dispersed or so-called dispersed Jews. Mm -hmm. Let's go over to John chapter 7. Starting at verse 35. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I'll start at verse 32. All right? And this is how it reads. It says, The Pharisees heard the crowd murmuring these things concerning him. And the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. Then Jesus said to them, I shall be with you a little while longer, and then I go to him who sent me. 
You will seek me and not find me, and where I am you cannot come. Then the Jews said among themselves, Where does he intend to go that he that we shall not find him? Does he intend to go to the dispersion among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? What is this thing that he said? You will seek me. You will seek me and not find me, and where I am you cannot come. Now, a lot of people take this verse and say, See, he said he was going to the dispersed. But when we clearly look at it, they were confused. They didn't know where that Jesus was going, and they did not know what he was talking about. So when we go back to verse 36, it says, What is this thing that he said? You will seek me and not find me, and where I am you cannot come. Well, Jesus was talking about going to heaven. That's what he was talking about, going back to his father. So when people take this out of context and say, you know, Gentiles were the dispersed Jews. That's not, this, that's not what this is talking about in context. So when we look at it, we understand that if you break these uh, verses down and you look at them carefully, you'll understand that that's not what he was saying. It was a mystery to them what was going on. Is he saying he's going somewhere else, which was heaven. You know, it, it, it is, it's so powerful that you bring that point up. They take one word. Mm -hmm. they, take, they take one word mm -hmm. and, and they build this, this massive ideology or a thought off of one word and and it's you know it's a tool of the devil you know they it's it's, it's you know that bait and switch kind of thing you know <laughs> i just want you to focus on this one word disperse 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 mm -hmm. and then they get you all riled up in the in emotion even even in, in the, all of us can be susceptible to that right they, right. they, they won't they'll throw this one word at you and then they try to get you off base and all you focus on is one word but if you concentrate and stay stay focused Keep it in contact, keep it in contact. because Amen. if you keep it in contact, there's, there's no way that you can get the dispersed. That Jesus is talking about going to other people. He, the context lets you know that he's talking about going back to his father. That's mm -hmm. right. And not to get off the topic, mm -hmm. uh, the scripture they love to use in, in, in reference to what you were just saying, Pastor, was uh, Isaiah 28:10, mm -hmm. where God says He wants to go line by line, precept, precept upon, upon precept, precept upon. a little bit here and a little <laughs> bit there. Right. And they use that as a license to go throughout the Bible and take other scriptures out of context and then bring them back over here to support the lie or the false teaching that they're trying yeah, to push. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Amen. See, and another point, just to throw it back up, it, you know, it's right in Texas. If somebody said, well, I don't see that. Again, going right back to 36, for what man of saying is this that he said, you should seek me and you should not find me and where I am, where I am, mm -hmm. there you cannot come. Well, we already know they followed them around that way going there. Right. Going uh, out uh, to uh, the other places. Right. But, but when I leave here, you know, it's, and it's prevalent, even when, when he when he rolls, right? Mary, we talked about that a couple of weeks ago, when Mary was clinging to him, right? Mm -hmm. Don't stop clinging to me, Mary. I have to go to the Father. Mm -hmm. they, right. he, yeah. He's talking, this is a spiritual language that he's giving. He's, mm -hmm. he's, he's giving them a, a spiritual revelation that they didn't understand it. Like yeah. I said, they didn't understand yeah. it yeah. then. Right. But even like what David was saying, that the thing about it is that precept upon precept and line upon line is biblical. Mm -hmm. That's how we ought to study. Precept upon precept. But they don't study precept upon precept. They rich because precepts are not just one word ideologies that you know, one word phrases that you that you build a, a thought behind, right? It's it's the totality of the context of what of everything that's being spoken of. So when we're talking about a precept. We're talking about the, the complete teaching of a thing, not just taking one word here and then going back to another scripture and taking the same word or something out of there and then trying to mesh them together, sew them together. That's not precept, and right. that's not line upon line. Well, and, and you, like I said, they take things out of context. Absolutely. And then they bring it over here. Right. And, and they want to call that precept upon precept, right. but it's not. That's not at all precept upon and, precept. As was said uh, a couple months ago at a meeting with some black Hebrew Israelites, I think it was Brother Andrew brought out when it was asked, well, how then are we supposed to study our Bible? 2 Timothy 2.15, it says, the sh study, the show thyself approved, rightly dividing the word of God. Mm -hmm. And they do not rightly divide the word of God. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, if we uh, get back into this, we see that, first of all, in the book of Acts, we covered what? The circumcision, mm -hmm. right? And then we went over to Galatians, and we started showing that we covered the dietary. Right? Mm -hmm. So when those people come and say that uh, Jesus only fulfilled the sacrificial law, of course we have tons of other scriptures. We want to show them these scriptures to let them know, okay, so 
circumcision has nothing to do with the uh, sacrificial law and the dietary law doesn't have to do with sacrificial law but they all together are the law so therefore we see that Jesus had already started giving the teachings that this was done away with and that that was done away with and let no man you know what I'm saying come against you in that so as we go further let's go over and look at Colossians chapter 2 We're going to start at, uh, we start at verse 16. And it says, So let no one judge you in food, that's dietary law, or in drink, or regarding a festival, or a new moon, or Sabbaths, which are a shadow of things to come. But the substance is of Christ. Let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels intruding into those things which has not seen vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind and and not holding fast to the head from whom all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments grows with the increase that is from God so we see you know in this verse is let, letting us know that that the Sabbath days the new moons don't let nobody judge you in, in foods. All of these things are done away with in Christ, which is what? The substance. So when we look at verse uh, 16 again, so let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbath, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is of Christ. So the shadow is not stronger than the substance. The substance is Christ. So when he came, he fulfilled all of these things. Now the thing that we want to get across is, a lot of people think that Christians say that the law is done away with. We don't say that. The law is not done away with. The law is eternal and it's good. Me being a saved person, if I come to an unsaved person, I use the law to show them their transgressions against God. If you're living with somebody and you're not married to them, then I'm going to show you in the law that that's fornication Amen. and that you shouldn't do that. You know, and if you're a drunkard, I'll show you, listen, the Bible says don't be given a strong wine. Amen. So I'll show you what the law is. But then we look, once you are saved and once you have faith in Christ, which is the substance, then the Bible lets you know that what? You remove, you are moved from the law and you are moved over into Christ. So then you do the things that Christ tells you to do because Amen. he is the head. And that's what this scripture is saying, verse 19. And not holding fast to the head from whom all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments grows with the increase that is from God. So... If, if Christ is the head of the body, then we're supposed to follow what the head said. <laughs> yep. and we're just the body of Christ, which is the church. So therefore, we see that what the scriptures say. You can't go around misquoting and saying what we believe when we're going to tell you exactly what the Bible says and show you what we believe verse by verse and line by line. Not precept upon precept. But we're going to let we're gonna let you know <laughs> saying how, how we feel about this. And we also want to address that, you know, this whole dispersed Jew thing and that faith is not for everyone as far as some law keepers say. Let's go back to Acts 13. They say that faith is not for everyone. Or not for everybody. That, that's a, a term. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. white man, right, right, white yeah. man can't yeah. get faith. Yeah, he saw, no, they can't get in. So, we're going to look over uh, back to Acts 13 at verse 26. I'm going to start at uh, yeah, 26. It says, Men and brethren, sons of the family of Abraham, and those among you who fear God, to you the word of this salvation has been sent. For those who dwell in Jerusalem and their rulers, because they did not know him, nor even the voices of the prophets which are read every Sabbath, have fulfilled them in condemning him. And though they found no cause for death in him, they asked Pilate that he should be put to death. Now, when they had fulfilled all that was, was written concerning him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in the tomb. Now, some would tell you that faith, or as we're going to uh, look later at John uh, 3.16, 
they tell you that for whomsoever that only means the Jews but when we look at this verse and I like this verse because it's showing us something a little extra at verse 26 it says men and brethren sons of the family of Abraham and those among you who fear God so first they add in those who fear God right so some could say well those who fear God could just be the other Jews right the dispersed Jews they could say that but it also goes on says to you the word of this salvation has been sent verse 27 for those who dwell in Jerusalem and their rulers because they did not know him nor even the voices of the prophets which are read every Sabbath now who were the rulers that they talking about talking about Pilate talking about the Romans who did what crucified Jesus they weren't Jews so therefore in the Word of God it says to those who fear and to those who rule over you salvation has been preached to all who may believe so when we look at this the context constantly shows us that the word of God and salvation is for everyone. Nobody's left out. Even at this time, the Jews were being persecuted against, and yet the word of God says salvation is preached to them also. So there's no getting around that in the Abrahamic covenant. Everybody is covered through the Abrahamic covenant, through salvation. How did Abraham, how did Abraham get justified? Through faith, not through the law. So once again, we go back and forth, but the Bible continuously paints this picture that it's just not through the law; it's through faith how you get your salvation. And I think it, you know you 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 touched on it, right? Mm -hmm. Abraham himself, before there was a Jew, before mm -hmm. there was a Hebrew, mm -hmm. Abraham was a Gentile. Amen. Right? He was a pagan person. His father was pagan. Was was into paganism, mm -hmm. worshiping idol gods, and God told Abraham get out of your father's house mm -hmm. right and Abraham believed God and so even before there was a Hebrew nation Jewish uh, religion and, and ethnicity Abraham trusted in God as a Gentile and so and so it is he dealt with I mean think about it. Mm -hmm. who was 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 Adam a Jew definitely not huh definitely not Cain Abel no huh no what about Noah no Right, they weren't Jews. Yet God had established a covenant, a covenant with, with them. them. Exactly. And so, so for, for for someone to say that God won't talk or that any any other nation other than Jews can't be saved, it goes contrary to the truth of the Bible. Amen. That's right. When we look at it, that's it. Another so, point for you for you move on that okay. I, I was noticing here. No, and it kind of gets back to what we were talking about early before we went online about Paul where it says because they did not know him nor even the voices of the prophets which was preached which which I read mm -hmm. which I read every set you read the body and don't know it and don't know it. So, that's right and that's the same thing we see today people want to argue with the script and it's right in the scripture the very things that you're going to not show them. exactly it's that and that's the first thing that we looked at in uh, 13 mm -hmm. that says don't let this thing come up on you mm -hmm. which was already uh, prophesied in Habakkuk Say it from Habakkuk. Habakkuk. I'm, that's, I'm just telling yeah, Habakkuk. <laughs> I got it now. All right, so that's the same thing that was already said that, you know, mm -hmm. don't let this thing come up on you where you wouldn't believe the things that he said he was going to do. Mm -hmm. They had it in the law. They had it in the prophets. Yet they knew Jesus Christ was coming. Mm -hmm. He was going to be the Messiah, yet still failed to acknowledge him when he got there. Yeah. So as we look at these things back and forth, <coughs> and we're, you know, saying there's so many scriptures that cover these things, we know that. Well, before I go there, I'm going to go ahead and read Genesis uh, chapter 12 to see that the Abrahamic covenant covers everybody. It covers the Jews, it covers Israel, and it covers all Gentile nations. It covers everybody. Mm -hmm. That's just how that's how it's written. There is no separation or, or even though they are God's chosen people, of course, we already know that he chose them for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And we know what the purpose was to be the light to all the nations. Mm -hmm. And, you know. People want to change these things, so this is important, you know what I'm saying, you know, as we go through the scriptures, that, you know what I'm saying, write them down, go back and make sure that you check it, and see that, you know what I'm saying, this is what the story is saying. So, uh, promises to Abram, it says, now the Lord has, at one. yes, 12 and 1, it says, now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, just like Pastor was saying. They were Gentiles in the beginning, and 
they were chasing after many gods and doing all type of reckless things right it says and from your father's house to a land that i will show you i will make you a great nation i will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing i will bless those who bless you and i will curse him who curses you and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed now when we look at this it's saying all the families of the earth shall be blessed he didn't say all the tribes of israel amen he said all the families amen. of the earth mm -hmm. so we all believe like abraham believed that's how we got our righteousness through faith hey come on give us some scriptures on that dave i know you got them over there and which ones are you looking for uh for uh abraham was made righteous through his faith now, you know, one thing I want to emphasize what you just said mm -hmm. in, in Genesis about the blessings to other nations. Mm -hmm. He said that twice in Genesis 18, 18, Abraham would surely become a great and powerful nation and all the nations on earth will be blessed through him. So he repeated it. And then for people like sitting on the right side of me. <laughs> <That's a little laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> and stubborn, he repeated again in Genesis 22, 18. He said, he said that, uh, uh, and through your offspring, through your offspring, meaning Isaac, all the nations on the earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. So, all the nations mean all the nation. Not right. just, if he wanted to say all the Israelites that were scattered, but they weren't even born then. Right. They weren't, they weren't even born then. So, but he said all the nations. That meant other nations other than Israel right. shall be blessed. And, and, and oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I wanted to, because you you said you wanted to look at something that said talks about Abraham right mm -hmm. being be justified by faith right mm -hmm. and not by works. Let's look at Romans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fourth chapter. Yeah, Ro Romans four. We start at verse. Uh, we just start at verse seven. Okay, it says, and and uh, I'm, this is King James version. It says, saying, "Blessed are they who blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Cometh this blessing upon uh, then upon the circumcision only?" Or upon the uncircumcision also for we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness how it, how was it then reckoned when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision then it <laughs> points out not in circumcision no, right <laughs> not in circumcision but in uncircumcision mm -hmm. he received the sign of circumcision as a seal of righteousness of the faith which he had yet being uncircumcised that he might be the father of all them that believe through that though they be not circumcised that righteousness might be imputed unto them also Amen. so it, it, it's very clear that abraham is the father of every person who believes Amen. that's how you become the seed of abraham mm -hmm. right. is to believe in god not to it has got nothing to do with your DNA, your physical DNA. Mm -hmm. It's got everything to do with the confession of your mouth and the belief in your heart that Jesus Christ was crucified for your sins and risen for your justification. What mm -hmm. verse did you stop at? Uh, I stopped at verse eleven. Okay, because I was just looking at uh, uh, verse thirteen. Keep I mean, it, I go ahead. NIV. It says, "But read twelve. Read, read twelve. Might as well read twelve on into." Okay. And I'm reading that out the NIV, and it says, And he is also the father of the, of the circumcised, who not only are circumcised, but, all, who, but who also walked in the footsteps of the faith that our father Abraham had before he was circumcised. Amen. And then verse 13, it says, It was not through the law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be heir, heirs of the world, but through the righteousness that comes by faith. Verse 14, And if those who live by the law are heirs, faith has no value, and the promise is worthless. Because the law brings wrath, because the law brings wrath, and where there is the law, there is no transgression. And Minister, if I may, I wanted to throw another verse in there. Mm -hmm. When you were talking about the, the Gentiles, this is Amos 9, 
And for the sake of time, I'm not, I won't go through all of it. They can read it on their own. Mm -hmm. But it's talking about David. It's talking about, and it's actually, it's prophetic. And it's 9 and 12. Yeah, yeah, nine and twelve actually gives it to you. But if you read it in context, you're gonna start about yeah, up above where it talks about David. But notice it said, "And all the Gentiles who are called by my name." Amen. Right now, so it says that what he talks about bringing Israel and all the Gentiles right. that mm. are called by my name. Mm -hmm. mm. Says the Lord. Right. Mm -hmm. But you, and then you know, I like because. I, I like how the King James has it. What version is that that, that, that you have up there? Twelve. No, what, what That's version? The New King James. New King James. Oh, okay. But the, the standard King James doesn't use the word Gentile, right? Uh -huh. the, the candidate and all the heathens. Right. Which are called by my name. Right. <laughs> 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 I only want you to get this mis you know, this misconception that I'm talking about race. Uh -huh. I'm talking about individuals uh -huh. who are wicked, uh -huh. who who are impaled by iniquity, uh -huh. right? <laughs> <He'd>. <laughs> <laughs> and let me reemphasize something uh, with what was said earlier in, in Romans 4 I'm going to start reading at 3 and 4 it says what does the scripture say Abraham believed God mm -hmm. and it was credited to him for righteousness mm -hmm. verse 4 now when a man works his wages are not credited to him as a gift but as an obligation. Read, yeah. read that out to King James, somebody. New King okay. James. Yeah, well, the King James says from, from verse, you want, what do you want to start? Four. From? Well, three, three and four. four, yeah. Okay, so three says, For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward, not reckoned of grace, but of a debt. Mm -hmm. And go ahead with verse five, too. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. His faith is counted to him for righteousness. Mm -hmm. And then he says in verse 6, David says the same thing. For yeah. even, as, even as David also described the blessedness or the happiness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. And that's really, when you, when you, when you think about all that David did, mm -hmm. amen. David didn't have to go and do a whole bunch of stuff to get to get declared righteous by God. All he had to do is receive it in faith. Believe God. Mm -hmm. He repented. But it, 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 it wasn't by works of righteousness. It wasn't the law. The law condemned David. Mm -hmm. But grace restored him. Amen. Amen. And where do we get that? Where, where's, now, let, let's go here, fellas. Let's go to James. Because this is another one of those things that since we're on the topic of faith and works going together we need to break this because they'll bring they'll bring up james yeah they'll bring sure. up james and say that you know faith, faith without, without works, works is dead okay you know, so <laughs> we want to point this thing out and break it down to show that what kind of faith and what type of works is it talking about since we did <laughs> and uh we're talking james chapter 2 starting at verse 14 for everybody who's listening it says what does it profit my brethren if someone says he has faith but does not have works. Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warm and feel, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham my father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works and by works faith was made perfect and the scripture was fulfilled which says Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God for he was called the friend of God you see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only now before we break this down let's get to the let's get to the meat of this thing Notice that what type of works he's talking about. It's not talking about the works of the law, 
but he's talking about the works of faith. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> That's the work he's talking about. So if someone comes to you and they start telling you, yeah, keeping the law, faith without works is dead. You got to work the law. I'm sorry, that's out of context. Death is not what they're talking about. And we go back to verse 1. It says, What does it profit, my brother, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? Well, we already know that you can be justified by faith, right? Mm -hmm. If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, it says what? And one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warm <laughs> and filled. But you do not give them the things which are needed for the body. What does it profit? Mm -hmm. So he's saying, listen, you can pray for them. But if you don't have the that work and the work right here. First of all, the work right here is. Uh, I'm trying to think of the word. Uh, when you give somebody something. Charitable. Charitable, right. It's a charitable work. Still not the law of Moses. This is not what he's talking about. It's a charitable work. So we see that once you pray, then guess what? Hit your pockets and help them. That's what you're supposed to do. Give them some food. Give them some clothes. That's the work that he's talking about. Verse 17. Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. So just praying for them and sending them on their way, God said that's no good. Help them. That's what you're supposed to do. Verse 18. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. Mm -hmm. So this is the faith, the charitable works. That's the work that he's talking about. Can I just add to that? Go. It, it, the essence of what he's saying there is this, is that when you have given your life to Christ, Amen. and, and the, 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 the presence of God has come and it indwells you, there is going to be substance that is exemplified in the way you live. It, it's not that you do this to get saved. That's right. It's that because you've been saved, these are just th these Results. are just like breathing, right? <laughs> it, it, it's, 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 you show me a person who's really been born again, mm -hmm. and I'll be able to show you that there are works, that there are things that are done in that person's life, mm -hmm. not because they're doing this to get saved, but they're doing it because they've been saved. Mm -hmm. Works go hand in hand. Regeneration go hand in hand with the indwelling power and presence of the Holy Spirit in a, in a believer's life. And so, he, he, you know, it, it, he's not saying that you have to do works to get saved. He's saying, you show me a person that, that is doing works, and I'll show you a person who has been saved by faith. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and I, think what, I'm sorry. I think what Paul, I mean Paul, James is doing is drawing a distinction between what they call a spurious faith. And what I mean by spurious mm -hmm. is not genuine. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just a sad okay. faith. Right, right. Like you got people out here in the streets that say they're Christians, but... Their lifestyle contradicts what a, a, the, the Christian lifestyle. If I profess to be a Christian, can I go out here and fornicate whenever I want to? Can I go out here and murder people if I want to? If I say I'm a Christian, you shouldn't see these kind of fruits coming from me. And Jesus, one thing Jesus said, you will know them by their by fruit. The fruit. Amen. So James is drawing a distinction between a person who says that they have faith, but you don't see the results of the works, the fruit. And if, if, I, if this person is my brother, and I say, God bless you, have a good day, and I see he's starving, he's hungry, and in rags, and I got the means to bless him, mm -hmm. and I don't, I say, I'll be praying for you, God bless you, you know. You got a pair of boots in your house, you know you haven't worn in about four years, <laughs> right. and this brother is the same size as you do, right. and, and you know you're not using those boots, and you can see his, his is, ain't got no soles on them, the, the shoestrings right. all messed up, they're all dirty. It, just a piece of tape. Yeah. What's, what's that? Duct tape holding them together. <laughs> and you, and you don't, you, you don't. The, the Holy Spirit don't say something to you like, you know what? Give him those boots. Right. Right. Amen. A true love. Because that's it, it, would just, it would just be instinct. Yeah. You would do that. Absolutely. But he, he drew a perfect example of hypocrisy. Someone who say they have faith, but they really don't. Because if you did. You would do the right thing. Absolutely. You would see the fruit. See, and it comes back down to where you tie it all together. It's back to the charity that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. The love. Uh, Jesus said, I think he was over there. With, oh, no, it was John 13. No, you know 1 Corinthians 13 we were talking no, about. No, 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 not okay. that one. But, but that, that's good to understand. We're talking about charity. Love, right. But I'm talking about what the one where Jesus say, by this, uh, oh, this by this way, no man don't know that you are my disciple. My disciple. 13, 34. Yes, John, John, love you had. John 13, 34. We tied all that that you talked about, right? Right in there. Even to the enemy. 
Amen. Amen. Right. That's my brother. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. How can I say I love God? I ain't got to know you, and I see you. Yes, right. <laughs> and, and that's even even you even to, even to your enemy, right? Yeah. right. Bless them that hate you. That, that hate you right? right? Right. Do good to them. They push you. <laughs> and and this is that's one of that's one of the greatest works that that will ever be produced mm -hmm. when you know. You, when you look at somebody and you know, man, it, I, it was a time that I just look at homeboy funny and he cuss you out. Now all of a sudden, you know, you can bump up against him. And, yeah. Whereas he, y'all you know, know my aunt, the auntie that, that comes to the yeah. Bible. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mary. Yeah. Man, I'm going to tell you, man. She, she was something else, right? But. Uh, Mary, Mary, you know we taping now. I got it. Look, look, she, 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 I told her I want a warning. I, I, I told, I told Mary the other day. I said, I said, a couple, about three, four weeks ago. I said something, Mary. No, she, um, I think she, she put a new hot water. I put a new hot water tank in in the house, right? And the water is real, 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 real hot. So she was in the kitchen and she turned the water on, and that hot water got to her hand, and she was in there like, ooh, ah, whoa, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. And she said, I said, oh, you all right, Mary? She said, yeah, but I didn't cuss. And these are the things, right? These are the changes yeah. that yes. takes place yes. when, when the Lord begins to rule yes. and to reign yes. in the yes. heart yes. and the minds of believers. Right. That change, you will be able to see a manifest difference in the working, uh, the outward working, hey, hey, of an inward change. Amen. Amen. And, and we don't. And, and another thing I thought about, and we'll, we'll let, let you get back, mm -hmm. okay. We don't go to church because we got to. Amen. We go That's to church because we love yeah. to. Amen. Right. 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 That's what it is. <laughs> All right. And uh, we're back at uh, verse 19. X, I'm sorry, James 2 and 19. It says, You believe that there is one God, you do, do dwell. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works? And by by works, I'm sorry, and by works faith was made perfect, and the scripture was fulfilled which says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Amen. So as the brothers have already said, you know, so we didn't, we didn't really lay this verse out. One that a lot of people don't really understand, but I guess we didn't probably all read it <laughs> so many times that we, you know, saying we understand it now. And this is just one of those things that you have to look at and you have to break down and you have to, you know, saying rightly divide the words and pull those, exegete those words, pull them out so that you understand exactly what he's saying. Here. You got to chew on the cud. That's right. <laughs> you, you know, I was reading a book that yesterday. Matter of mm -hmm. fact, matter of fact, not even yesterday. Uh, up this morning, man, God got me up. I was up from like 12 to like 3 o'clock in the morning just, just reading about sheep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, and he, Jesus says he's the good shepherd. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. We're sheep. That's right. He said, but the thing about sheep, man, sheep will just chew on the cud they just you know like a cow just just chew on that cud just just keep on going over and that's how we have to be with the word of god yes right. we have to you know they love cheap love chewing on the cud mm -hmm. right? right. and we have to begin when, when you've been born again mm -hmm. there, there, there begins to be a love for god's word that is birthed in you amen mm -hmm. yeah amen yes. amen and, and, and you, yeah. you you will begin to chew on it and the more you chew on it mm -hmm. man the, the, the more you will have an affinity and a desire and a taste for it, right? Mm -hmm. You'll begin to begin to, to, to see some things <coughs> that before, who was that that asked that question? They, uh, uh, Pastor, I think that was you today in, in class. You asked about how how uh, Paul couldn't oh. necessarily, he didn't have a revelation. He didn't have that the knowledge. He didn't understand the word of God. Mm -hmm. But man, when, when you get born again, the spirit gets in you and you start chewing on the word of God, now, don't you? You begin to see some things, and it's nothing. Right. I'm gonna tell you. I'm just get back to it. No, man, man, it is nothing greater than when when you began to chew on the cut. When you began That's to right. get into the Word of God, and you studying it, and That's you breaking right. it down. David, you ever been there, man? When you done looked at something, and then you 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 God shows you something, mm -hmm. and then one of your brothers will come, and they'll they'll say, "Look, let me. This is what God gave me out of this, and it's the same thing that yeah, the Holy Ghost yeah, gave you, yeah, and then you'll see something yeah. else, and it's confirmed." When you began to be 
be able to read the word of God and the Holy Spirit give you enlightenment and ill, uh, illumination to what his word is saying, man, that is one of the most brilliant and just blessed feelings that you can ever have as a, as a believer in Jesus Christ. And know mm -hmm. that God is teaching you and showing you the truth of his word. See, man, so in what you're saying is uh, the three of us talked about it before we came upstairs. Mm -hmm. That's right. No, we ain't going to No, we nudging you. Go on. That's true. That is true. No, no. But we was talking about how Y'all maybe forget what I was Oh, how? Because some people want to, uh, well, you know, uh, well, it's not simple, and you got to know this, and you got to have all these degrees. God wants you, all of us, to understand His Word. All and like you say, just get it, open it up. Uh, you might come along and say, well, did you consider this chapter? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, today, and I'm going to talk about it later on, mm -hmm. something that Andrew pointed out. I said, I never saw that before. You know what I'm saying? When Amen. you give with one, one another, Absolutely. it's not hidden from you. Absolutely. God wants you to understand Absolutely. His word. Yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> and, and then, I mean, that just lets you know, man, you know, all of us, now, me, you, all of us at points, and I'm sure have felt like, man, I, I'm, I'm messing up. I'm not worthy. Mm -hmm. You know, dang, I, I, I messed this thing up. Mm -hmm. We've all had that sense mm -hmm. uh, of, of just fallenness, brokenness. Yeah. But, man, when you get in, in the presence of the Lord, and then you see that God has given you the ability, a gift, to be able to understand a word, his word, where the other people have looked at it and, and don't even still don't have an understanding of it. And God has opened your eyes to be able to communicate truth to you. Mm -hmm. That's got to let you know that you are somebody because God just doesn't share his word, mm -hmm. the word of truth, with just anybody. Amen. Amen. Come on. What they was putting nudging me to say. <laughs> That's right. Come on. You were you were right today, and I ain't gonna say where. It was something that you said. You were right. You ain't gonna say it quite because we filming. God, God is like that. No. <laughs> true. No, true. When you talk, we was talking about Paul, mm -hmm. and you said Paul got revelation. Okay. Paul did get revelation. Mm -hmm. He got it. In, uh, uh, I can't remember the chapter now. Galatians. Galatians two. Was it two? It two. But anyway, because he tell you, he said, I didn't get this from no man. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? Jesus right. Christ right. gave it to and, me. And, and that, that's, that's, what I was, that's what I was talking about. That's special revelation. That's revelation. We got general revelation. We got special revelation. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's where you can know you somebody, man, because mm -hmm. Paul, well, he had the knowledge of the word, right? Mm -hmm. He had the letter, mm -hmm. but he didn't have the spirit. Mm -hmm. And man, when when God, when you get connected with the source, mm -hmm. when you get connected mm -hmm. with God, mm -hmm. that's when your, your eyes are opened up. Right. Now, I don't think, though, he has to be careful because we don't get revelation. No, God gives us revelation. Not revelation. We not get now. illumination. The illumination. Right. The revelation is his word. Right. 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 And, right. and remember how we right. talked right. talk right. about right. how revelation came on and they right. wrote right. it as the Spirit of God? Right. So, because right. of the revelation, what he gave us is, is, is illumination. Is, right. right. The, the revelation is already there. Right. right. We and just have scripture, right? It's right. all right. scripture. I mean, you don't write scripture. No, right. right. You're absolutely, you're absolutely right. No, we don't get it's It's already here. But we... There's so many people who are blinded to yes, it. Yes, and so yes. when, when, when that, to be able to have, like you said, the illumination, have your eyes yes, open so that you yes. can now see and understand yes. what the revelation is. Mm -hmm. Because the, the, the black Hebrew Israelite, they got the same... Revelation we had, mm -hmm. they just don't have illumination. You know, they that don't they don't have it. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's hidden from them. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, that's right. and that's what we see in the Bible. All this, it, and sometimes and we gotta let me get back to no, 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 but sometimes no, you be saying because so. you be trying to show it to me. You say, but Lord, how come they can't see it? It's right there on the. But like you say, God has blinded the and for it, whatever yeah, reason because they don't fall against the word or no, whatever, no. and you be trying to figure out how come they can't see it. It ain't that we so smart. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, you know what it boils down to. It's just like Paul, man. Listen, yes. It's hard for thee to kick against the prick. Yes. You have got to humble yourself yes. before the Lord. Yes. And if you're not willing to get down and say, Lord, I'm wrong, <laughs> and you're right. Exactly. You're going to walk in darkness. And say, oh, <laughs> come on, man. And, and with the book in the book in the book in the And, and that, that verse he was talking about was Galatians 1 11. Okay. Well, read, read that, read Dave. That. Dave. Uh, <coughs> Galatians 1 11, I'm reading out the NIV. It says, Paul says, I want you to know, know this, brother. That the gospel I preach is not something that was man-made. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. Oh, that's it. It's in the scriptures. Yeah. That, that, 
That's scripture, right? Mm -hmm. So it's revelation right. that mm -hmm. he got. That's right. That's right. And when we read it, we get illumination. We yeah. get yeah. clear yeah. understanding yeah. of what's yeah. going on. Yeah. That's right. Dave, good for nothing. <laughs> 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 that's what. That's hey, what. Did you have something else you want to expound on? Oh, you can go for it. No, I, I want to go back to something you were bringing out in Galatians, the second chapter. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> verses 15 through 21, and I'm reading out the NIV. It says. And we who are Jews by birth mm. and not Gentile sinners mm. know that a man is not justified by observing the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. So we too have put our faith in Christ Jesus that we may be justified by faith in Christ, mm. not by observing the law, <laughs> because observing the law, no one will be justified. <laughs> now, uh, let me jump all the way down. Let's see. Can I, I want to jump down to... 21 was a good verse, and I want to see if, if there was something in between. If while we, that's fine. Well, let me just read it on down. Verse okay. 17. Mm -hmm. If while we seek to be justified in Christ, let's see. Okay, I'm reading uh, 2 7. I'm at 2 17. Galatians, Galatians 2, 2 17. Okay, Galatians 2 17. Not just going to read it out to uh, King James. 17. Yeah. You, you want it in, in the NIV, though, right? It, it's up to you guys. Oh, oh okay. Okay. So he says, if while we seek to be justified in Christ, it becomes evident that we ourselves are sinners. Does that mean that Christ promotes sin? Absolutely not. If I rebuild what I destroy, I prove that I am a lawbreaker. For through the law, I died to the law so that I might live for God. Paul goes on, and I like repeat, I like quoting this one in the King James. Mm -hmm. For I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And and then and now, then I'll go back to the NIV in verse 21. He says, I do not uh, frustrate, minus, minus, I got so much uh, mess written over my verses. This is from that V. But oh, I, no, read, read, read it from that, because I, I like the way. Okay, I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness could be gained through the law, then Christ died for nothing. Amen. And we know God did not send his son down here to die on that cross. Mm -hmm. If we could attain righteousness or salvation any other way, we know that. In fact, he says that in Galatians 3.21. Mm -hmm. For Paul says that for if there had been a law given, given, that, that we could have, and I'm paired, this is a DIV, David International. <laughs> <laughs> Three, uh, 321. 321. Is, there, is the law then against the, the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But there wasn't. There is none. There wasn't none. That's why Christ had to come. In Galatians 6.25, it's, it's, it, I'm, I'm sorry, I said Galatians 6.25 Deuteronomy 6.25 okay. There is a righteousness That comes through the law But not for us God says you have to keep the whole law mm -hmm. I mean all his commandments Every last Not 99.9% not <laughs> not You had to keep not one, ten. Yeah, right. Because they, they, they don't understand There are more there's more than this ten laws. Right. right. I mean, there's you, ten commandments But, but there, 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 are, there are hundreds of laws Right, and so God says you had to keep all his commands if you want to stand before him to be righteous. And I'm paraphrasing. But the problem is we inherit that sinful nature from Adam <coughs> and Eve where we couldn't keep it if we want to. Amen. You, could, you could try it hard as you want and, and do all that you can, but you could never keep all God's commands because we had this sinful nature in us. No matter how hard we want to be righteous, we can't. And so, once we sin, uh, in Ezekiel, God says, the soul that sin it, it shall die. Mm -hmm. Romans 3, 6.23, he says, the penalty, the wages of sin, is death. James says in 2 tens, if we break one of his commandments, we're guilty of breaking them all. Why? Mm -hmm. Because all it takes is one, we become a sinner. Mm -hmm. and, and, the if, and after that, we, the death penalty, well, the penalty is death. So, and what did Jesus say? Let he who is without sin. Yeah. So we have all, yeah. all, of, all, us, of, us all of sin. Us. <laughs> we cannot appear righteous before God uh, by keeping the law because all of us have broken his commandments. The only other way that we can come before God is through his son, putting faith in his son. Bless your name. 
Yeah. And uh, what is that? Second Corinthians five twenty one. <laughs> he who knew no sin was made, sin was made sin that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. That's how He planned to save us, and that was that was before the creation of the world. Amen. Amen. Uh, the answer was because you quoted. Uh, you went, took us to the text, right, in Acts 15, right. where they had the council. Right. And, and, and who was it? Peter stood up. Was it Peter or James that stood up and said, why do you, why are you, why are you trying to put yeah, a yoke James. upon mm -hmm. the neck of these disciples, mm -hmm. the follow, these folks who are following Jesus, mm -hmm. which neither our fathers nor you nor us ourselves could fulfill? Good point. Right. Right. Good point. Amen. None yeah. of them. Why would we do that? Right. But for some reason, they still want to do it. <laughs> But we know that, you know what I'm saying. Oh, and one more verse. Because um, we were talking about preach, it the preach. other day. Mm -hmm. Galatians 5 4. Yeah, I'm sorry. 5 4. I thought you were, but I didn't Thank know. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to correct you until no, you know. Right. Right. 5 4. So we understand. Galatians okay. 5 4. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Amen. You got to be a little. There you go. All right. Christ is become. Oh, well, let me back. Let me read into it. Verse 3. Mm -hmm. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised. That he is a debtor to do the whole law. Mm -hmm. Christ is become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are trying to be justified by keeping the law. You have fallen from grace. Wow. Mm -hmm. what, need, what else needs to be said? Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, and to uh, as we look at that, I know we're about to close. As we look at, let's just address this one time uh, that they will teach that grace is a time period. But mm -hmm. when we look into the Bible, we see that grace is not a time period, but God's unmerited favor on us. And uh, we can start at uh, Ephesians 2, 8, 9. Mm -hmm. That's one of our, our popular go-to verses. You say Ephesians? Mm-hmm. 8, 9? Yeah, 2. Chapter 2, verse 8, 9. And, and what I'm pointing out here is when he used the terminology grace, grace is not used as a time period mm. it's not used as that so as we continue we always want to look at the context in which the message is delivered and say if people say that Christians believe something then we want to go to the verse and say okay well this is what the Bible say and this is what we believe right mm -hmm. so Ephesians chapter 2 starting at uh, verse 8 it says for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God not of works lest any should boast for we are the workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So notice there's there's no time period there. And it's, and 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 uh, emphasize something that was said earlier. Mm -hmm. Now here you just read. He says it's a gift from God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Paul said that earlier in Romans four, chapter four, I think it was verse five. He says if you if you work for it, then it's no longer a gift. Right. You know <laughs> exactly. But here we see it's a gift. We can't work for our salvation. That's right. If we if we if we try, then Christ is no effect to us. That's right. Hmm. That's what the you know he died in vain. Yeah. That's right. Uh, you know you well you finish here. You gonna no bring no out? I'm good. No, I wanted you to bring out reemphasize something you brought out a, a couple months ago that uh, uh, First Timothy one eight for the law is is good if you use it properly. Mm -hmm. But read read into it. Let's you start at first. Uh, I'll start at first. Yeah, yeah first, first Timothy. Timothy. That, you know that was so good what you brought out. I just want to hear it again. No, we lose. Hey, hey, man, I mean, but that's, that's what that's what a good meal will do, right? That's what you, that's what you <laughs> yeah. don't. That's right. No, but he, he hit first Timothy. Yeah, yeah, first Timothy one, and uh, maybe start at verse three. Yeah, I'll start at verse three because uh, it was so good. All right. And it says, As I urged you when I went into Macedonia, remain in Ephesus, that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine, nor give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which cause disputes rather than godly edification, which is in faith. Now the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from sincere faith, from which some having strayed, have turned aside to idle talk, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor the things which they affirm. Now hold it right there a minute. Mm -hmm. So you, he's, Paul is saying you got people that desire to be teachers of the law, but they don't understand neither what they say or what they're affirming. 
you know, they they trying to be teachers of the law, like somebody we just talking about. Mm -hmm. They want to be teachers of the law mm -hmm. to emphasize the law, but they don't know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead. All right, verse eight. But we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully, knowing this that the law is not made for a righteous person, mm -hmm. but for the lawless mm -hmm. and insubordinate, for the ungodly and for sinners. For the unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers, murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for fornicators, for sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers, and if there is any other thing that is contrary <laughs> to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God which was committed to my trust. Now go back up to verse 8. <laughs> go back up to verse 8. <laughs> it says, now we know... Now we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully and properly. Amen. Knowing this, verse 9, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. Now, since we all have sinned, what we can't become righteous by keeping the law because we done broken. Right. Even if you just break one commandment one time, as, as, as uh, James said, you're guilty of breaking them at all. All it takes is one sin and we're all condemned after that. So he says, now we know that the law is not made for a righteous man. So who is that righteous man that he's talking about? Jesus Christ. Jesus. Right. Because he became our righteousness. Amen. He died for our sin. He fulfilled the law by keeping the whole law. Then he took on our punishment, the curse, according to Deuteronomy chapter 21, verses verse 22 and 23, curses a man that hangs on a tree. Jesus didn't sin. Jesus kept the law and yet he took on our punishment our curse. our curse and then that's why Paul said and let me repeat it again 2 Corinthians 5 21 he who knew no sin became sin he didn't literally become sin he became our sin bearer he took upon our sins uh, 1 Peter uh, 2 2 24 I want to say and he became our sin bearer that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. And let me add this. That's why Pastor Moss talked about this, eight, Romans 8.1. Eight, now, yeah. therefore, there is yeah. now no condemnation to them who are in Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Who are not after the flesh, <laughs> but after the Spirit, right? Yeah. So, you know, again, that, that, that gives us, because we're not walking in the law, we're mm -hmm. not walking in our flesh, we're in Christ. We have we're, we've been covered with His righteousness mm -hmm. because He's taken our wickedness, our transgression. Amen. Amen. And and so that's why uh, Paul says in Galatians six two, we are to follow the law of Christ. How do we do that? Paul, to me, I I, I love Galatians two twenty. Mm -hmm. uh, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ who is in me. We put our faith in Christ and we walk with in fellowship with Him. Uh, going back to Romans 8, 8, uh, I think it's uh, 13 and 14. Rome, let me turn to it. Romans 8, 13, 14, because the talk Paul talks about uh, the person that has the Holy Spirit. If we're led by the Spirit, then are we children of God. So our job. 14, I'm sorry. sorry. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God. They are the sons. What is it, 815? 814. 814. Okay, so our job is to walk in fellowship with Christ and the Holy Spirit. And it's not us that's out here. It's Christ living in us. And he, he will give us that victory. He gives us that victory. Amen. Amen. Can I give one scripture on the end? Go yeah, ahead, Pastor. Paul. Uh, 1 Corinthians 9, 19 through 23. 1 Corinthians 9. Right. Uh, and what it says is... Let me get to that. Let's go. Are you there? 19. 1 Corinthians 9, 19 through 23. Okay. okay. And so we, we Paul tells us some things about himself here. He says, For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win the more. And then he breaks it down. To the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might win Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. 
to those who are without law as without law, not being without law towards God, but under the law of Christ, that I may win those who are without law. To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by all means say some. Uh, now this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be partakers of it with you. So Paul says, I went into the temple mm -hmm. that I might win some. That's right. mm -hmm. I went into the synagogue yeah. that I might win, win some. <laughs> I even circumcised uh, Timothy. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. And many of them keeping the Jews happy right. and bringing them to the gospel. Mm -hmm. That's right. But we noticed that he didn't do that with Titus because right. he was talking to the Jews. So, so I mean to the Gentiles. But Paul was wise. God had given him wisdom to use all these things. So when people want to say, well, did Paul keep the law? No. Paul used the law righteously, as you Amen. said, right. to bring people to the gospel. Amen. Amen. And, and let me bring out one more thing in Romans, uh, the eighth, the sixth chapter, yeah, like this. Verses, 15, <laughs> verses 15 and 16. You say Romans what? Romans 6, 15. It says, Paul says, what then? Hold on a second. All right. Romans 6. I'm going to read verses 15 and 16. Okay, go. And I'm, I'm reading 15 out of the NIV, and then I'm going to quote the rest, 16 out of the King James. It says, Paul says, What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. 16. He says, Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are, to whom you obey, whether if you yield to sin, you go out here and practice sin, then death will be the end result. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm trying to remember the the, the last half. Uh, well, you're not that to whom you yield yourself servant. Or to obedience unto righteousness. Or obedience unto righteousness. So we are our focus should be on Christ and walking in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. If we walk in the Spirit, as, as uh, Paul says in Galatians, was it the fifth chapter? We will not fulfill the, the lust of, of the flesh. Galatians 5, 16, 17. Thank you. Right. Now, you know what? I, 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 want to, I want to, one day, I want to get on, uh, and I don't I want to have to be a whole class, but I want to talk about one day the <coughs> vulgarity. Because, you know, if, if you want to talk about the law, mm -hmm. and you don't want to deal with grace, mm -hmm. we must talk about the profanity and the profaneness of your communication. Mm -hmm. yes. and, and, and how in the world you think that by any means I, I, I know I, I know when I get to heaven I'm not going to see God up in heaven cussing up a storm mm -hmm. that's right, amen. right. That, that, calling that, everybody but hey, amen. A, a, a son of God we'll tell you what, what uh, let's see now, you, um, now next week we know it can't be next week because next week we are doing uh, John 316 um, you think you can have something ready for the for the following week yeah, I, I can do that, but I want. I mean, it's going to be a group discussion. But oh, I, right, but stick with that. What I like to yeah, put a little outline. Definitely, right, yeah, I'll right. put, a, I'll put That'll an outline. That way, we get a chance to talk about it. Okay, so, two weeks. Mm -hmm. right. And so we here here give me a title, and we'll put it out there. So uh, just to follow up, um, next. Oh, we back tomorrow. We, we, yeah, we, we back tomorrow. We tomorrow. Too far. What you teaching on tomorrow? What you teaching? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is, it's gonna be biblical. It's gonna be biblical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right. gonna be good. That's right. But keep in mind uh, uh, that we'll we'll be uh, on the seventeenth. We'll be at um, Power, Hope, and Grace. And forgive me, I, I have to put the address up there. I should know it by heart, but you know, some places you go, you just, you know where you're going. Right. But we'll be at Power, Hope, and Grace at eleven thirty. For one hour, and the topic will be uh, uh, Saint John three sixteen versus the so called Hebrew Israelites, and we're then on Thursday, October the nineteenth, we'll be right back at our round table dealing with it again. In other words, we're gonna look at how they try to chop that verse up according to those precept upon precept, precept, and we're gonna look at everything Bible. We're gonna take us out the loop. And let the Bible answer. Right. So it's John three sixteen versus the so called Black Hebrew Israelites. But let your friends know uh, Thursdays and Fridays six to seven. We're we're on God's will. Uh, we are on here. Um, we're trying to get to, uh, and that's why I be encouraging other guys to teach. When they teach, then I can monitor the Facebook Live to see if somebody got comments. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'll be eating like y'all be eating, so it's easy for me to do that when they teach it. <laughs> um, so, but that being said, anything else? Uh, well, I think we covered everything tonight. We addressed the topics about uh, 
the faith versus law and the principles of it and we we definitely pointed out that Jesus came and fulfilled the full law he mm -hmm. came and fulfilled it we never said that he done away with it but he fulfilled it and at that you know what I'm saying just keep listening we'll come back with more information and Pastor Hall if you want to uh, pray us out amen let me just say listen feel feel free as, as you you know come across this broadcast and record it on Facebook Feel free to, to send us questions if That's you have right. any Bible questions that or uh, comments that you, or comments that you want you want to leave. Uh, we, we welcome those and we appreciate it. Amen. Let's pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. We just come to, to this evening just to say thank you, Lord God. This is one of, if not the greatest privilege, yes. that you have and allow your, your your creation, your sons, your daughters to to have to be able to communicate the Word of God to. Your, your, your men and your women, your sons, your daughters, your boys and your girls, Lord God, to let them know, Father, that, that there is a light, that there is love, that there is truth in your word. And God, that they don't have to be entangled in the lie. They don't have to be snared by deception. And the devil does not have to, they don't have to stay in that deception that they're in. And so, God, we just thank you today, Father, for the mm -hmm. opportunity to be able to, to share this, this rich and true word of God, this food, Father, that is able to, yes. to bring life, Lord God, Amen. to bring vibrance in the soul, Lord God, of individuals who will receive it. So, God, we pray, God, that this word would go forward, Lord God, and it would it would attach itself, Father, to those who you have purpose for it to do so, Lord God, and to, that it would bring life into the light and the hearts and the minds of those who you destined it for. Father, we just pray, God, that you would bless us now, Lord God, as we go forward, and that you would get all the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. 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 Being a man is a choice. Not because you wear the pants or the bass in your voice. No, sir, it's much deeper than that. As a matter of fact, now that this domestic violence issue has been brought to the forefront, I'm gonna have to be both transparent and blunt. You see, I know what it's like to try to control someone else's life because you can't control your own. Going to church every Sunday and God's trying to remove you from his throne. I know what it's like to be a cosmetic Christian To front like you up but your spirit is torn down Saying hallelujah real loud but your soul is still bound So you hide your fears and inconsistencies behind a mask of anger Treating the ones you say you love like a perfect stranger Now she's in the kitchen afraid for her life Just a cheap spiritual paint job over an old raggedy life So I'ma have to call you out To see you strong and true Isn't there something we need to do? Have you withdrawn your eye from God's view? For there is so much undone work to do Have you considered your job to be through? Christian man, where are you? Is your help meet by your side Or is she forced to the front while you run and hide? Are you wrapped up in your natural pride Simply unwilling to serve and stride? Let me bring some clarity to this point Many women's hearts do bleed in hopes a real man would take the lead. Christian man, where are you? 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 Christian man. bone in your back? Some of us are way off track. This generation needs us to stand up and do that which we've been called to do. Are you imprisoned by your mind? Can't you see there's not much time? So I ask you, 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 and me too, Christian man, where are you? Amongst unfamiliar faces, in the midst of hidden dark places, where are you in your mindset and philosophies, in your innermost thoughts and secret deeds, in your unfulfilled desires and unsatisfied needs, in all that you possess and what truly possesses you? If you ask yourself these questions to thine own self, you must be true. Christian man, where are you? Ah, 